Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know about EVE Echoes. Today's Cat Skull Academy comes at you from inside the public test server for the October-November update, as we're having a look at one of the new E-War modules that is due to arrive in that update, Sensor Dampeners. Now, sensor dampeners are a very unusual module. We're going to have a look at what they are, what they do, how to utilize them, and then have a look at a couple of the ships that are getting benefits from them as well. If you do find this video useful, then let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell so that you never miss a video, and of course, let me know in the comment section down below what topics you want me to cover in future videos. If you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. Details are on screen now. Otherwise, with all that said and done, let's talk about sensor dampeners. Sensor dampeners, often referred to simply as damps, are a new type of mid-slot sub-weapon found under the electronic warfare bracket. So let's take a look at one of these by opening up the Mark III sensor dampener. Now, what these do is when you hit someone with a damp, it reduces their scan resolution. In the case here of the Mark III sensor dampener, that is a 35% reduction to the scan resolution. Now, remember, of course, scan resolution is the statistic that determines how quickly you lock onto an enemy ship. And obviously, the speed that you lock on is relative to their signature radius. A smaller signature radius ship requires a much higher scan resolution in order to lock on quickly. So, if you can reduce your target's scan resolution, you can make it much more difficult and much more time consuming for them to lock onto your ships. Very useful in PvP fleet engagements, as it means that ships really have to decide whether or not they actually want to relock onto a different target. Often in PvP, you are advised to remain completely unlocked, and your fleet commander will select one target at a time for you to lock onto. He will give that as a fleet command. You lock on all together as one fleet onto one particular target and focus fire on that. That means suddenly if someone comes along with sensor dampeners and starts hitting your entire fleet, when it's time to change target and move on to another ship, it can take an awful long time to lock on. With multiple sensor dampeners affected on a target or high enough strengths, you can increase the time it takes to lock on by an infuriatingly large amount. So in this case here, the Mark III sensor dampener, you can see it's meta level 1. Meta level, of course, is just the rarity and the relative power of that module. The power grid requirement, like the other um, new e modules, is only 1 megawatt. Very easy to fit these onto a ship, as long as there's a mid-slot available. It has an activation cost here, 24.3 gigajoules, and an activation time of 10 seconds. That means every 10 seconds that this is active, it's going to chew 24.3 gigajoules out of your capacitor. And, of course, it has an optimal range and an accuracy falloff too. In this case, 20.5 kilometers for the optimal range, and an accuracy falloff of 41. Now, this ultimately means the optimal range there ultimately means the distance within which you are doing 100% of the damp's effectiveness. So if the ship is within 20.5 kilometers, you're going to have reduced its scan resolution by 35% by activating this damp on it. That said, one, if it were then to move an additional 41 kilometers away, so it's now at a total of 61.5 kilometers, that 35% it's now a full accuracy fall off away, and remember an accuracy fall off is where you go from 100% down to 50%. So it's now sitting at 61.5 kilometers away, which is optimal range plus one accuracy fall off. That will have dropped that scan resolution adjustment from 35% all the way down to 17.5%. That's still a big reduction though, still slows down the lock, but it just means that you do want to try and maintain that optimal range to the best of your ability. Get as close to that 20.5 kilometers as you can. Now, as you increase from a Mark III to, say, a Mark V, you'll notice here that the activation cost does increase. It's a very minor cost, though you've gone from 24.3 up to 24.5. The scan resolution does increase from 35% to a 38% reduction, and the optimal range and accuracy falloff have minorly increased as well. It's gone from 20.5 kilometers optimal range to 21 kilometer optimal range, and an accuracy falloff of 41 has gone up to 42. Now this trend continues pretty much as we go through the Mark 7 sense dampener, the Mark 9 sense dampener, all the way up to the storyline, in this case the smoke sensor dampener, which you can see here has an activation cost of 25.5, um, an optimal range of 22.5, an accuracy fall off of 45, and a scan resolution adjustment of 43% downwards. Finally then, the Code Cracker Sensor Dampener, which is the highest level version currently available in the game, the Meta Level 8 Officer. Um, this one has an activation cost of 26.3, a scan resolution adjustment of negative 46, nearly halves their scan resolution 
Oh, that's just painful to even think about. At an optimal range of 24 kilometers with an accuracy fall off of 48. Now that means again there, that accuracy fall off on the optimal range, whoopee, 72 kilometers and you're only reducing by 23%. 23% scan resolution adjustment from 72 kilometers. That's terrifying. So what you're basically looking at there is a difference between a Mark III and an Officer level. The Mark III has an activation cost of 24.3, the Officer has an activation cost of 26.3. The Mark III has a scan resolution of 35% reduction, here it's a 46% reduction, so that is quite a large increase across the meta levels there. Not so much on the activation cost, but plenty there on the scan resolution. And the optimal range again is fairly minor, it's gone from 20.5 up to 24 kilometers. the accuracy falloff has increased from 41 to 40. Is it worth going up to the officer ones? Well, yeah, of course, if sensor dampening is going to be your thing, then yeah, it's going to be worth upgrading to, but it's not huge in anything other than the scan resolution adjustment. Obviously, the bigger the scan resolution adjustment, the better it actually works. Speaking of getting your damps working as best as possible, there is a skill for that which is found under electronics, under electronic systems, scroll all the way down and we come to the signal jamming skills. Now signal jamming, if we look at the basic one, signal jamming level 5 will increase our sensor dampener optimal range by 25%. So if we were looking at one of the ones that, for example, the Mark III, which of course has that 20.5 uh, kilometer optimal range with signal jamming at five, so you get the additional 25% for that, that has increased to just over 25 kilometers optimal range. Not huge, but a nice little adjustment. That means you can be a little bit further away and know that you are still applying the maximum amount of dampening to your target. Once you start to hit advanced signal jamming, you'll see that this increases the strength of the sensor dampener by 25%. So this means, whereas, for example, the uh, Mark 7 dampener has a 40% scan resolution adjustment negative, you're getting an additional 25% on top of that, which is 10% uh, in total. Obviously, 25% of 40% is 10%. Add that onto the original 40%, and suddenly that Mark 7 sensor damp is now reducing their uh, scan resolution by 50%. Again, once you get that onto the officer, that is an absolutely massive increase. Getting advanced signal jamming to find is what I would wholeheartedly recommend if you're going to be using sensor damps. Kind of a theme I'm noticing with all of these modules, that getting signal jamming up to advanced 5 is the biggest change there. Expert signal jamming increases the accuracy fall off of your sensor dampeners. So again, if you're looking at, say, for example, the Mark III has an accuracy fall off of 41 kilometers, that's now going to be nearly, well, just over 50 kilometers um, once you've got expert signal jamming up uh, all the way up to level five as well. To me, that's not as big a bonus, but it is still well worth having if using these E-War modules is a big part of your playstyle. Well worth doing, though I would say advanced signal jamming to 5 is going to be much more noticeable as an effect than getting the expert. It just means you can start applying it a little bit faster, and if your opponent tries to run away, you still get a bit of an effect as they start to disengage. 38 million isk to start training, though. Oh, that's an expensive one. Obviously, these stats and that that we see, like these costs and that, this is based on the public test server. Those are subject to change. You can fit sensor dampeners onto any ship in New Eden as long as it's got one free mid slot and at least one megawatt of available power grid. That said though, there are some ships in the Galente Federation ship tree that do get special bonuses to these. Of course, at tech level 4 in the frigate branch, we have the Maulus. The Maulus is the one that you saw at the beginning of this video, and it is the ship that is in the thumbnail. Weird looking ship, another upright ship, typical Galente unusual design. It reminds me a little bit of some kind of seahorse. Unusual ship, I don't hate it, even though it does have the little Imacus face halfway down the front as well, which still weirds me out. Now, being a frigate, this will get its own dedicated uh, episode of the Frigate Pilot Manifesto eventually when I get round to it, but for today's video, let's just have a look at the trait description. Here you can see the Maulus gets a bonus for signal jamming each level um, of 5% sensor damper strength. Now of course that means once you have signal jamming trained all the way up to basic level 5, you've got a 25% increase to your sensor dampener strength. Now that 25% increase to strength is also the same as if you train up, uh, same for any other ship, if you trained up signal jamming up to advanced level 5, which means you'll get the 25% bonus to the optimal range for having signal jamming bonus at 5, and you'll get the 25% bonus here from the ship to its strength. Again, we mentioned with the Mark 7 signal uh, sensor dampeners that again, that 40% scan resolution therefore would shoot all the way up to a 50% scan resolution adjustment. Very, very powerful. 
It's not just the frigates, though, that get these bonuses. Across in the cruisers, there are some unique ones here as well. And oh boy, do I mean the word unique in multiple different ways when it comes to the Celestis. What the hell is this ship? It's just... I... <laughs> It reminds me kind of like a vacuum cleaner and a hand dryer and all kinds of other weirdness rolled into one. I really don't like the look of this ship. Like, this is Galente design at its absolute worst. But anyway, trait descriptions here. This is one of those ships, again, a few people do ask here and there, what does this ship do? How do you use it? And I usually have to respond, wait until we have those E-War modules, then I can talk about it. Because without those E-War modules, the Celestis really isn't worth it. Like, the turret damage is... Ugh. There's nothing much to this ship without the fact that it's got the uh, the sensor damps on it. Anyway, if you have trained advanced signal jamming up to level 5, you're going to get 5% sensor damp strength per level, 25% in total, and 5% sensor dampener optimal range, 25% again in total. That means you're getting 25% optimal range from the skills, 25% uh, optimal range then from the ship, an additional 25% sensor dampener strength from the skills, having it advanced 5, and the sensor dampener strength, an additional 25% on top of all of that, thanks to the ship. You are basically doubling your skill bonus with this thing, and that makes the sensor dampener utterly terrifying. You are getting humongous range, and you are getting some really quite powerful signal dampening. That is going to leave people just sitting there screaming, why aren't they locking on properly? And that's kind of what it does, and I can't wait to see people screaming at their phones going, why am I taking so long to lock on? Not realizing there's a Celestis sitting in the corner laughing. Then, of course, there is the Covert Ops, which looks every bit as bad as the standard Celestis, but it gets a plus 7.5% per level to sensor dampener strength. That is, of course, a 37.5% increase overall. Interestingly enough, though, that is from advanced micro warp drive operation, not from advanced signal dampening. Um, ultimately, what we're looking at there is you train into your micro warp drive operation, you get a reduction of 10% per level to the micro warp drive signature radius penalty. So, when you're using a micro warp drive, obviously it increases the signature radius of your ship by usually about 500%. Here with the Celestis Covert Ops, if you've got advanced micro warp drive operation trained up to 5, you're only going to be increasing by about 250%. I say only, that's still a big increase, but it's not as big as it could be. And you can then activate those sensor dampeners for a 37.5% increase on sensor dampening. Again, that is on top of any sensor dampening skills that you already happen to have available. A, a fleet of Celestis, whether it's just a Covert Ops, one on the side, or whether it's standard Celestis with a couple of Maulers around, you really can mess with your opponent's fleet and just stop them locking on for anything. It very, very interesting. Great, I've, I've seen this happen before in EVE Online where someone jumps into an anomaly with uh, like with someone trying to uh, clear an anomaly. You hit them with a sense, you lock on, you hit them with a sense of damage and you start shooting. And you watch as that yellow box just stays there for ages. You whiz around them, hitting them, and they just never get chance to lock onto you whilst you rip them to shreds. If that sounds fun, then sense of damps might be for you. Anyway, that does wrap up everything I wanted to say then about sensor dampeners. Very unusual version of E-War. A lot of people tend to overlook them because it's not quite as exciting as messing with someone's weapons or making the target a little bit bigger. But in my opinion, it can actually be one of the most hilariously good fun ways to, uh, to play around with E-War. You just stop them locking on. They sit there watching you rip them to shreds, wondering why on earth their ship is taking so darn long to lock onto you. And that to me is just endless fun. But, again, this is my thoughts and opinions. I'm looking forward to these E-War modules being acti uh, activated and added to the game. What about you guys? Are you looking forward to having sensor dampeners in the game? Is there some E-War module you're going to be fitting to any of your ships? Are you looking forward to things like the Maulus or the Celestis? Do you think that the Celestis is actually one of the most beautiful ships in the game? If so, I think you need your head tested. But hey, personal opinion, we're all allowed our own. <laughs> Let me know in the comments section what you think. Otherwise, folks, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.